Zolanguela o Veteronugo, a Rua Itabua, a Guido Talitaina na Barrongo e na Bula FM, na Mandoa na Serre. Bula! A Langonoa, e Lutoca, do Talitaca na Bula FM, vai ter na Mandoa na Serre. Nem Bula Vinaca, na Regengo, a Bula FM na. É na casa. Nós vamos gostar muito. Aqui vem o nome Bula FM, nome do NSR no sul. Nem Bula vem na cá. Nós vamos gostar Jerry, é o meu lampasa. O do Barronga é na Bula FM, nome do A. Bula FM, nome do NSR. In the news tonight, Sudelpa members in squabble over party process. Privileges Committee report delayed to tomorrow. And later in sports, Leroy Atalifo gets last minute call up for World Cup. From the studios of FBC Super, Jackie Spade. The Sudalpa leaders have today opposed all claims that the party is not following its own constitution, and its annual general meeting in Savu Savu earlier this year was a farce. This comes after a legal challenge was filed against party president Ro Felipe Tuisawao, Anare Chale, Andilitian Gionim Baravi, and Usaya Wangatai Rewa. Suva constituency president Watisoni Nata, along with the likes of former MP Mere Samisoni and Sudelpa Youth Wing President Chope Koroi Savo, have filed this legal challenge, saying the party is not following its own procedures. Ali Kimbia with the story. Rofilipe Tuisawao says the conflict between the party is something they have tried to resolve numerous times, hitting out at the Nata-led group, which has decided to mount a legal challenge. Yes, they, they, they were concerns and they have concerns about the, the process, but as, uh, as everybody there saw, it was uh, a transparent uh, process, but as we have explained that to them and uh, tried to request them to follow the processes with him through the uh, management board. In a statement last night, the group stated their lawyers will file for a notice of hearing appointment. However, Tuisawao says, he has not received any documents to prove the legal challenge. The group says this has been done to strengthen party's accountability for its voters and supporters. The group claims that the Sudalpa election held in Savu Savu and subsequent actions thereafter are alleged to have been done in breach of not only the party constitution but also the Political Parties Act 2013 and the Constitution of Fiji. I haven't, been, uh, I haven't received any documents till now. So I need to wait for that, and we assess the situation. So Delpa leader Sitiveni Rambuka refuting all claims by the descendant group, saying all processes were followed. As far as we're concerned, it was a, a constitutional meeting. It was uh, held in accordance with our constitution. And uh, the, even the business committee meeting that was held the night before, yes. This is the latest brick wall that the party has hit within its own circle. This latest action by Sodelpa members shows there seems to be a major cause for concern for the party as its own members are now trying to outdo each other, claiming that they have the best interests of the party at heart. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. The Privileges Committee will present its report in Parliament tomorrow morning. Speaker of Parliament Ratu Epeli Nailatikau has allowed the committee's request for more time to continue with its deliberations over the privileged matter. The matter is the breach of privilege by both the Prime Minister Vurenge Mbangi Marama and opposition MP Pio Tikunduandua. On Monday, Ratu Epeli had informed Parliament that after considering all the relevant materials, under the standing order there had been a breach of privilege by Mbangi Marama and Tikunduandua on August 9th. The matter relates to the alleged personal attack by Tikundu and Dua against the Prime Minister and also the altercation between the two. I am satisfied with the justification furnished by the committee. Therefore, I am allowing the Privileges Committee to table its report in Parliament on Friday morning, 6 September 20. Let us complete our deliberations. We were not able to do it yesterday. That is why we went to seek permission from the speaker and he has approved. So we are sitting today again. Minister for Defence Inia Seruratu has clarified that the Robinson R-44 helicopter that crashed in Atewa Bay last month was given clearance on its flight plan despite its departure in the late afternoon. Seruratu told the House that a new manual was launched in April that lays out the processes for any search and rescue operation in Fiji. 
The manual is in line with international best practices and has in place numerous safety features to ensure an effective and safe rescue. Among the measures is the inclusion that operations begin at first light and end at last light. The helicopter was carrying out a medevac operation at the time from Naitaumba Island to Lombasa Hospital when it crashed, claiming three lives. Unfortunately, uh, 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 there was a mishap, uh, but uh, let me just say at this stage that uh, it's still under investigation. I sought guidance uh, from the authorities this morning and all that they mentioned to me that uh, all I can mention before this August House is uh, we have a government appointed accident investigator, Mr. Andrew McGregor, uh, who is uh, full into the investigations. And uh, this, uh, there are things that probably will be highlighted in his report and uh, we'll leave it at that. Minister for Economy Aya Said Kayyum has made the government stand clear that there will be no deal with Pesa Plus on Fiji's mahogany. Following a question by Sadelpa MP Viliam Ngavoka on why government is dragging on the agreement, Said Kayyum said government wants to look after Fijian businesses because Pesa Plus could lead to job losses. Apinisa Wangai Rindovu reports. Business as usual, Ngavoka was keen to know why New Zealand has stopped buying Fiji mahogany and suggested Pesa Plus the Regional Development Centred Trade Agreement with Australia should get involved. The Minister for Economy in response told Ngavoka that he needs to read the fine print of PESA Plus. Because if he reads the fine print of PESA Plus, it will demonstrate and show him that Fiji will in a way be giving away a lot of our sovereign capacity to be able to raise revenue, to be able to control our trade. The Minister also stated that Fiji has been doing well in the mahogany market and claims regarding New Zealand pulling out as a buyer cannot be made at this stage. In 2016, New Zealand bought 741.96 cubic meters of mahogany from Fiji. In 2017, they bought 385.33 cubic meters of uh, uh, mahogany from Fiji. And uh, last year, 373.34 cubic meters of mahogany. So obviously, Mr. Speaker, sir, the Honorable Member, like I was saying, is talking about 2019. 2019 has not yet finished. Fiji has some of the world's largest planted forests of mahogany. In 2018, Fiji exported a total volume of 3.19 million cubic meters of the valuable wood with a value of $5.8 million. Apenisa Wangrandobu, FBC News. The upgrade and maintenance of the 99 nursing stations around the country is progressing well. Health Minister Dr. Firemi Wangai Nambete gave an update on the work being carried out while responding to a question in Parliament today. Lena Rees has more. Many of these nursing stations were constructed some decades ago and were in need of urgent repairs. We've been told by the contractors and those who are doing it, including in some areas by our own uh, Minister of Health, uh, carpenters and uh, workers that they will be able to complete this in this uh, by the end of the year or early next year. Another question that was raised in Parliament was whether health professionals in the rural and maritime communities were provided transport. In the maritime areas are all the nursing stations and uh, health centres being equipped with their own mode of transportation? Yes, we uh, try to provide uh, transportation for the nursing stations, especially the most geographically dislocated. Eh? I was up in Vunolebu, uh, Kioa has its own uh, 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 launch and opportunity to be able to get across, together with the Tukevesi um, uh, boat that's actually able to serve Kioa and also Rambi. There are three divisional hospitals, two specialist hospitals, 18 subdivisional hospitals, 84 health centers, 99 nursing stations and a mobile facility called the MV Vevueti in the country. Lena Reese, FBC News. Up ahead, Reform Committee identifies issues, makes recommendations, and Ministry calls for assistance to meet goals. Details after the break. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiana here in Bar. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, I'm Miri, I'm from Lotoka, and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua, and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki, I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, 
only the classic hits. A massive 277 issues need urgent attention at the Fiji Revenue and Customs Service. A business reform committee has been tasked with reviewing tax and customs administration, ensuring smooth implementation of the VAT monitoring system and improving stakeholder engagement. This has resulted in the high number of issues being identified. The 28-member committee in one meeting has identified a host of issues. Out of the 277 issues, the top ranking issues that they have highlighted is that about 13% of the respondents feel that the business issues need to be addressed, and these are the ones about 10%. VMS system, 12% feel it needs to be addressed. 16% believe that FRCS customer service needs to improve. Uh, the other one that is on top is trade facilitation needs to improve. Sayed Kayum says the committee has been empowered to gather views from businesses without interference. There was uh, probably a particular level of uh, uh, dissatisfaction by some people in the business community uh, for a lack of understanding by FRCS on some of their business processes. And hopefully this will, of course, create a much better business environment for them. Multi-million dollar companies, prominent business people and industry leaders make up the Business Reform Committee. We would like to ask governments if they can consider bringing in exporters into the community and, and, and in the process, help convince the government that PESA, PESA Plus is good for Fiji in growing exports. The members of the committee also have representatives from manufacturers. Uh, and Mr. Speaker, sir, majority of the exports we have, apart from agriculture, of course, in the manufacturing sector. So manufacturers are actually represented. The economy minister adds, in anticipation of the report, the FRCS has already set up a new small business unit. Edwin Nunn, FPC News. The Employment Ministry is working closely with Film Fiji in ensuring compliance on labor laws in relation to foreign film production companies working in Fiji. Minister Parvin Kumar says so far this year his ministry has worked with 70 foreign film companies through Film Fiji. Kumar says the production houses have their own human resources team that manages the employment issues. My ministry has been reviewing and had implemented compliance procedures and mechanisms for dealing with all types of labor-related complaints reported to the ministry. This also includes employers that engage local workers for film production in Fiji. The Fisheries Ministry needs more assistance in order to protect our waters and the marine resources as they are running out of time. While presenting his ministerial statement in Parliament, Minister Semi Lavasau highlighted that Fiji made a commitment in 2005 to protect and manage 30% of our waters by 2020, but this is yet to be achieved. Sanyani Mboilo reports. With a few more months left for the year to end, the Fisheries Ministry is asking for support to achieve its goals. To address this, Honorable Speaker, the Minister of Fisheries has been actively work, working with line government agencies and non-governmental partners to identify alternative options for large-scale MPAs and MMAs. Opposition MP Simi Rasova commended the efforts by the non-government agencies who have supported the ministry so far. The opposition would like to put it on record with a sense of appreciation and recognition for the works of the AFJ movement and other stakeholders with this movement to organize the imposition of regular taboo upon our traditional fishing grounds and the very nature of delicious yet depleting species of fish and other marine life. Fisheries Minister says they have also undertaken stock assessments at 283 traditional fishing grounds in the past 17 years. This preferred platform of information sharing allows custodians and customary owners to complement their traditional knowledge with scientific information that the ministry provides. Fiji's exclusive economic zone is 1.29 million square kilometers and the total coastal waters is a little over 2% of the overall area. Sainian Mboila, FBC News. Disaster Management Minister Chone Osumate says disaster risk reduction is a priority for Fiji. Osumate says the adoption of the National Disaster Risk Reduction Policy showcases that Fiji no longer views disaster risk reduction as just a humanitarian issue, but also as a development issue. Environmental degradation and unsustainable development planning and rapid urbanization. The policy outlines what government will continue to build on to ensure 
that a comprehensive and systematic approach to DRR, or disaster risk reduction, helps achieve poverty alleviation and sustainable development. And Kelly joins us now with the latest from business. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up. New mobile app to improve customer service. And in growing Fiji, Minister explains legal aid service expansions. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Shamiza. And I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Michi FM because, because it's hot. My name is Rajni Talata and I'm from Vatulaloba. Uh, and we listen to Mirchi FM because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. My name is Sagar Reddy. We are in school, we are in the house, and we are in the house of Mirchi FM. We are in the house of Mirchi FM. Dago Mama. Mirchi FM. It's hot. Leading business, Vodafone Fiji today introduced Fiji's first artificial intelligence-driven contact center chatbot. The mobile app named Joe is Vodafone's 24-7 digital assistant designed to improve customer experience. Josiah Nanungo reports this highly skilled chatbot provides responses to most inquiries from Vodafone customers. Its new Joe chatbot will avoid delays in checking balances, phone prices, data plans and other Vodafone services. We always have been uh, ahead of the game in terms of bringing in cutting-edge te uh, cutting technology. For us, it's going to materialize into cost savings, efficiencies and effectiveness in terms of uh, driving productivity in the organization. This technological advancement will also ease workload for Vodafone staff. We see this technology as a collaborative technology, so instead of our staff spending time on very simplistic and repetitive tasks that can easily be automated, we are improving that aspect of the work so that our staff can now add more value and handle more complex issues. In while Vodafone's ICT sales executive Varun Kumar says it took almost four weeks to develop the app. So when you see itself, the Joe, how it's built, it was built uh, or developed, I would say, uh, within a one-month uh, time frame. So the baby was developed in a one-month time frame. Joe will guarantee customer satisfaction through my Vodafone app. Chat with me today about device prices, roaming services, your account balance, and much more. You can even drop a line or two to check how I am doing today. So download my Vodafone app on Play Store or App Store now. And come say Bula to me. Chose Yenanunga, FBC News. Food lovers will soon be able to use a new app which will allow them to order food and get it delivered. The Easy Eat app that will be introduced in November will also allow you to book a table at a restaurant. Founder Devesh Pratap says the new app will bring Fiji on par with the rest of the world in terms of food being delivered. He adds there will be no cash transactions involved as people can pay online using their debit and credit cards. Now this app gives you the opportunity to actually right the moment you order the food. So from the kitchen floor to your door, you can monitor where your food is or where your order is. We believe the app that we have is the first of its kind in the sense that apart from just delivery, we have got a pickup feature. You can actually go out and pick up your food. You can also or, uh, book in your, uh, your table, reserve your table. The app Easy Eat has been developed by DG Hub Mobile APPs, web development, audiovisual and digital solutions company with operations spread across Fiji and New Zealand. Sinipa from HFC Bank joins us now with the latest from the money world. A British pound hovered around a one week high today as another parliamentary defeat for the Prime Minister made investors optimistic that a no deal Brexit could be avoided. The U.S. dollar fell against most major currencies as the economic data in the U.S. and China and a de-escalation in Hong Kong's political crisis lured investors to riskier assets. Analysts streamed forecasts for the Aussie and New Zealand dollars as they both languished near multi-year lows amid escalating trade wars and collapsing interest rates. Meanwhile, Australia reported a weaker than expected trade surplus for July. The Aussie dollar has ignored the decline in the trade surplus as it narrowed to 7.2 million in July from June's surplus of 8 million against the investors' expectation 
of $7.4 million. It's all from HFC Bank, Vinaka. Thanks, Sinifa. Here are today's exchange rates as set this morning. The foreign exchange market was mixed with the Fiji dollar down slightly against the Chinese one, but rising strongly against the U.S. dollar. The Sangamoli slipped against the Aussie and the Kiwi, as well as the Euro, but rose against the PNG Kina and the Japanese Yen. On to the commodities markets. Oil prices were back on the rise, nearing $56 per barrel. Gold rose slightly to close at 1548 per ounce, and silver was steady at 1946 per ounce. In growing Fiji, the Legal Aid Commission has grown significantly over the years and has also expanded its services. This was revealed by the Attorney General Ayesai Kayum in Parliament today when giving an update on the working plan of the Commission. Kore Tandulala reports. Compared to three main offices around the country in 2006, the Legal Aid Commission now has 19 offices. In 2018, the breakdown of the advisory work that the Legal Aid Commission gave in family law matters over 8,702 uh, matters, criminal matters 4,420, and civil matters 13,603. So we can see the very nature of, civil, of legal aid services now changing quite significantly towards the civil uh, areas. In terms of the number of litigation cases, matters before the courts, currently family law matters 3,319, Criminal matters, 9,967, and civil matters before the courts, uh, 2,040, Mr. Speaker, sir. As part of its growth, the Commission has also extended its services into other legal fields. In 2006, for example, we had about three legal aid commissions throughout uh, Fiji. Today, we have locations of 19 legal aid offices very quickly two in Suba, Nasino, Nosori, Korobo, Rakiraki, Tabua, Ba, Lotoka, Nandi, Singatoka, Kayasi. Navua, Lambasa, Senganga, Nambuwalu, Sabu Sabu, Tavuni, and Levuka. And three more will be opened in 2020, I should say, in Kandavu, Rotuma, and Bunindawa, Mr. Speaker, sir. The government aims to work and support the commission to continue to improve its services. Kure Tandulala, FBC News. That's it from Business Tonight. Sports is up next with Jamie. Thanks, Kelly, and good evening up ahead in sports. Flying Fijians hold final training run in Fiji. And Navo are ready to roll in the big league. This and more coming up. Navango Merea, Maramani Waya, Manatuya Sawa. Radio Fiji One. Probably Roy Atalifo has been called into the 31-member Fiji Airways Flying Fijians Rugby World Cup squad. He comes in as replacement for Kalivati Tawake, who's been ruled out with a knee injury sustained during the Pacific Challenge test against Tonga last Saturday. Initial indications were the injury was minor and Tawake would be able to return to full training in a short time. However, the injury did not respond to treatment, so Tawake traveled to Suba on Tuesday for an MRI, which then ruled him out for an extended period. The Flying Fijians held its final training run on home soil today before flying out tomorrow. Coach John McKee says the main focus in that session and the ones to follow will be solely for its opening Rugby World Cup match against the Wallabies. Felipe Naikaso has more. Leave no stones unturned. A message from Coach John McKee as the team wrapped up its preparations in Fiji today. Really on track, you know. We, we know we've still got a bit of work to do. You saw us um, introduced today something different in our training, where we're doing short blocks um, very intensively. You know, really specific around our game plan and, and attack and defence, and and that worked very well for us today. Not only for for developing our game plan specifically for for uh, our opening game. 
Offload King Leon Nakarawa has also stated that coaches have been doing their part during training sessions and players will need to mirror that on the field. It's up to us now. Uh, the score card. You're the one being uh, picked for, for, for this game, for the, for, for the Rugby World Cup. Oh, it's all on us now to work hard. I think that's the most important uh, uh, part going forward uh, for this uh, campaign. The inclusion of Fijians in other Rugby World Cup teams is not something Maki is bothered about. For those Fijians who are playing for other teams, well, well, good luck to them and, you know, I wish them all the well. But, you know, for us... You know, I'm, I'm focusing here on, on our group here. This is the group of Fijians who, to me, are the most important and, and you know, that, that we get our preparation right and really fly at the Rugby World Cup. The side will leave for Japan tomorrow. Fiji play Australia on the 21st of this month in their opening match of the Rugby World Cup. Philip and I, Castle, FBC Sports. The Fiji Airways in Rua are hoping for a much improved outing in the NRC this weekend. The side drew 22 all against Brisbane City last week in a match they feel they should have won easily had it not been for a few mistakes which they've worked on this week. Faria Begum reports. A number of key areas needs to be looked at if the Fiji Airways Drua team was to retain its national rugby championship reign. It's just our defence, that's one of our weaknesses, that there were a lot of mistakes and... Uh, on the game against the Brisbane City and, and also when, when we have the ball then we have to maintain position. That's very important for us. The coach says they want to play the Fijian style of rugby and the new players in the team have been impressive. Yeah, certainly, certainly. I'm, I'm very proud of the boys, uh, uh, especially when there's 11 new caps. 11 new caps and, and then that's the first crack for them in the first game. And uh, they showcase their talent. And, and the basic skills they have, and uh, there were a lot of opportunity. We, we would have scored a lot of tries. Prop Choeli Veteaki believes the players need to work on combinations. Do the, do the basics right. I think we, some of our, uh, some of the basics we didn't do right. Uh, ball retention, uh, ball possession, and uh, just a clean out, aggressiveness in defense. Fiji Airways Drua will host the Western Force at 3 p.m. this Saturday at the ANZ Stadium in Suva. Faria Begum, FBC Sports. Fiji-born All Blacks winger Sevu Reese has been named to start against Tonga in the Test match this weekend. The All Blacks host Tonga at 2:35 p.m. this Saturday, and you can watch the match live on the FBC Sports channel. The Lambasa and Rewa football teams have lodged their protest against Lautoka in the Vodafone Premier League. The two teams are protesting against Poasa Mbainivalu, who is currently suspended by the Lautoka Football Association. Mbainivalu featured in the VPL match against Rewa and Lambasa, where Lautoka won both matches. The two teams are disputing that Lautoka should not have fielded Mbainivalu as he was suspended. FGFA CEO Mohamed Youssef says they will have the hearing of the protests before the course IDC next month. Now we're getting all the facts to assemble and uh, then the BOC will meet to decide uh, on this protest. Uh, all I can say at this moment, uh, this is in regard to Posa Benibalu on his eligibility to play for Lutoka in the last two VPL matches. Fiji women's under-19 football team captain Coletta Likudulodula is honored to be part of the team. Fiji currently leads Pool A of the OFC Women's Under-19 Champions League with six points and will take on Vanuatu at 11 a.m. tomorrow in their third pool match. The past five years for Navo football president Rajiv Prasad has been a roller coaster ride. However, all these sacrifices have paid off with Navo back in the Premier Division after winning the Senior League playoffs. Faria Begum reports. The jubilant president says the entire Navo community is looking forward to the court's IDC tournament next month. I'm very inspired, excited about it and uh, looking very forward to be in the Premier Division, like uh, where this is a place where Navo really belongs. Navo rep Alfred Ali, who has been instrumental for them, says he expects to continue his fine performance. We need to score goals this uh, Sunday and uh, it will be a good uh, game for the team. Navoa will face Lamy in its final senior league match this Sunday at 3 p.m. at the Uprising Beach Artificial Turf in Pacific Harbor. Faria Begum, FBC Sports. That's it from sports and new media later on. After Instagram, Facebook is now also considering hiding the number of likes on people's posts. 
Details coming up. Radio Fijian baru tu sunda, banyak purana purana kanal lagi, atau banyak rosa sunda, banyak cahal lagi. Umesh Chandra, atau Kanta Chandra, sama wife. Kami lo Radio Fiji tu, banyak sunda si sunda, banyak acha program, number one radio. Kumar Sami naik ke Bombay Lugu Lato ka, Radio Fiji tu me purana kanal lagi, kami banyak cahal lagi. Kumar nak kafe me jata, Radio Fiji tu sunda. Radio Fiji tu, desh ki dharkan. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. We're so close to the weekend and this current weather is something to adore. The temperature isn't exactly soaring, the sun is certainly making more of an appearance and the weather is warming up. Hooray to that! Now to the west, it's an ever ready picnicking spot, all bright and beautiful. Eastwards from Pekha Barasuva, cool breezes with sunlight. And up north, more of the same weather, the sun is really impressed, I guess. At sea, south east winds 15 to 20 knots. For the tides, low tide at 11.43 pm with high tide at 6.10 am. Sunrise will be at 6.10 as well. For tomorrow, it's Friday. As the weather cools and the breeze picks up, there is a dance to the leaves and a freshness to the air. It means that the beauty and magic of the holidays are approaching. Exciting! Tomorrow's temps, all centers in the lower 30s. And looking further on to Saturday, all you have left to do is choose the perfect picnic spot and fill it with a great dish. The weather will be in favor anyway. How do you like the idea, Jackie? I like it very much. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fijian Pulse tonight, we ask, can this Flying Fijians team make the Rugby World Cup quarterfinal? Yes, because a strong team has been selected. I believe they can make it. Their performance continues to amaze me. Fiji will have somebody takes to reach the World Cup. They've got a very good team. Staff. They must have the spirit eh, to be. They may have the physical fitness and all that, but the spirit has got to be there. And the spirit has to get from the Holy Spirit. I trust in the boys, and because they have the confidence, they can do it better. Yes, they will win all their games and they will win the Rugby World Cup. Recapping the main stories for tonight, Sadelpa members in squabble over party process, privilege committee report delayed to tomorrow, and Leroy Atalifo gets last-minute call-up for World Cup. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question this week we're asking, should more severe jail terms be implemented for domestic violence? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, beautiful mountain landscape with Vatulele Island in view taken in Singatoka. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj via Facebook page FBC News, via Twitter page at FBC underscore news or hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Good night. Today FM, Today FM rocks. I'm Linda Form, I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate, I'm from Ba, I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm Makereta from Nandi, we love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania, I'm from Lotoka, and I love Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today